This original WSRE presentation is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. The historic Imogene Theater in Milton. It's a story as dramatic as any that has ever played on her stage. It's turned into a very happy tale, though, and we'll tell you all about it. Coming up next on this latest edition of In Studio. She's back to life, the wonderful Imogene Theater in historic downtown Milton. She's played a starring role in this quaint community nestled in beautiful Santa Rosa County. From vaudeville to silent moving pictures to fires and rebuilding, the Imogene Theater has quite the story. She is back in a big way, and we have quite a cast assembled to tell us all about it. Let's get right to it. We are pleased to welcome many of the players in Santa Rosa County who will bring us up to speed on all the latest in downtown Milton and more specifically the Imogene Theater. Joining us throughout the broadcast, Kyle Verner, the general manager of the Imogene Theater. He's, of course, very happy about the current state of affairs at the Imogene and the exciting plans for the future. In our first segment, I'm also pleased to introduce the mayor of Milton, Wesley Meese. Wesley grew up in Milton and is a former president of the Santa Rosa Historical Society. Mayor Meese is also a former Milton City Councilman. Wesley Meese is presently a school teacher in the Santa Rosa School District. Also Santa Rosa County Commissioner Bob Cole. The Imogene Theater is located in Mr. Cole's district. Bob Cole is a longtime supporter of the historic district in Milton, and Jeff Snow. Jeff is a current city councilman with the city of Milton. And later in this evening's broadcast, we'll hear from some others with vast knowledge of Lady Imogene. But first, we'll say hello to Commissioner Cole, Mayor Meese, Councilman Snow, and Kyle Verner. So gentlemen, a bit later in our show, we'll get into more of the uh, specifics of the history of the Imogene, but I'd love to talk with you all first about the role the theater is playing now and will play in the continued revitalization of downtown Milton and the historic district there. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank Boy, you. got everybody here today. <laughs> this, is, this is fun and I, Hope you didn't mind me referring to you as a cast, because you certainly are. You're all playing a very vital role in this project. And Kyle, if you would briefly, since you're going to be on the whole time, but just kind of start us off and tell us about the Imogene, what's, what she is and what's going on. Well, the Imogene is uh, a very unique uh, place. I mean, it's, it's played the, uh, a role of history. It's played a role of entertainment. It's played a role of... Uh, providing a sense of pride in, in, in a community and, and it's also suffered and but at the same time it, it is a survivor and it always seems to come back and it always comes back better than what it was before. So we're really excited that uh, the Historical Society was able to save it and to uh, bring her back to life and she is flourishing and we're very proud of of uh, what she is and what she does and how she plays a role in, in a really neat community of Milton, Florida. Can't wait to hear more of the details about the future and I really am excited to delve in to the history. Wesley, um, this you're the mayor of Milton. What do you think of the Imogene? Well, you know, the Imogene Theater is a big part of the re revitalization of downtown Milton. Uh, when you're trying to revitalize a city like Milton, a historic district, you really need something to be a draw for the people to come downtown, a constant draw. Uh, and so the Imogene is, is uh, providing just that. And Kyle Verner, of course, uh, he, he has been in the Imogene a little over a year now. And, uh, and, and what the citizens of the Panhandle of Florida, even beyond, are starting to learn is that there's, there's programming at the Imogene, and, and they're constantly coming down. And that trickles to all the businesses in the downtown, and of course, people are patronizing those shops and restaurants. And so, it's a huge beacon um, for the revitalization efforts of our downtown. I think it's very exciting. What are, you, what are your thoughts, Jeff? Uh, it, it, like uh, Mayor Me said, uh, the importance of the Imogene is uh, second to none downtown, I believe, uh, and I think it's an important role for local government to support that in all of our businesses downtown and throughout the city 
to make sure that they have all the tools, at least from us, that we can provide for a success. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, um, Bob, this is in your district, and I know you love history. Uh, we were talking a little bit about the amazing history in that whole area. You've no, got some thoughts. I do. You know, Santa Rosa County's seen exponential growth over the years, and Navarre, Gulf Breeze, Pace, even Pea Ridge has seen growth. I think it's we're going to see a resurgence to downtown. We move the courthouse out of downtown, get it in a new location, open up that to uh, evening life and different things because not only do we have the Imogene as kind of a, a diamond in the rough and that's continuing to grow, but we, we start out in East Milton with a red brick road mm -hmm. that's historical. Mm -hmm. The river itself, the Fisher Hamilton building, the Exchange Hotel, then you move on to the railroad, the L and Railroad Depot, and from there on to the Baghdad Mill site and the village of Baghdad and the cemetery in Baghdad. It's it's not just a historical district, but it's a whole historical corridor from I-10 all the way to Highway 90. So, and and I see a resurgence type thing as if, as if when we can make a determination on where we're going to go with the courthouse uh, af after it's vacated and uh, bring people back to downtown. I see entertainment, evening li life, uh, dining on that river as being the, the resurgence that we're gonna see uh, for the city of Milton. My family loves to go over and, and take in a bite to eat and see whatever is going on there. And it's a, what, a 30 minute drive? Let's talk about that. Not far from Pensacola, from Gulf Shores, from Destin. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's really a, a nice centralized location, a uh, good distance from everywhere, from from the beaches in Destin and Port Walton Beach. We have visitors coming up, um, as well as Pensacola and, and points beyond, and we have people just stopping off the interstate, uh, to just just having to stumble into Milton, and uh, and so uh, it's got a little bit for everybody. And and, and to kind of uh, you know mirror what uh, Commissioner Cole was saying, you know when I became mayor uh, three years ago, uh, walking downtown on the weekends, a Friday or Saturday night, it was it was pretty much a, a, a shut up town. It was closed. The sidewalks rolled up at 5 p.m. And what we've seen in the past uh, three years is uh, a resurgence. And the Imogene is playing a key part in that. And so it's amazing how if you go and look at uh, our downtown on any given Friday or Saturday night, and now on the weeknights, uh, there's cars, there's people walking around, there's activity. And, and that to me is the best part about it. And so she is really the beacon uh, for the downtown. And I think people are seeing that from all around. And it's really not, a, not a much of a trip uh, to get in the car and drive 30 minutes to Milton from wherever you are, and, and the location is really helping us out. I have learned through the years that when a theater is dark for even a night, um, things aren't as vibrant. So I think mm -hmm. it's very important to see you all supporting this. And, and Jeff, you're talking about revitalization efforts. Is this a concerted effort? Is it just kind of happening, or is, is it just the time is right? I think all of those. I think there's a, a, a big part for all of us to play from the citizens to the leadership from the county, the city, and uh, I just, uh, I see great things ahead of Milton, and uh, I think it is, is definitely time for it to happen. Bob, uh, you're, um, I agree with that. I'm, I'm very excited for this whole area. I think it's great. Um, you've got some pretty big, big visions um, I, I, from what, just the little bit that I've talked to you. And I think it's great to have that vision and, and bring people together. What do you see down there eventually? Well, with all the negativity of taking the courthouse out of downtown, and, and it's really not done anything for downtown. Uh, it closes at five and it's not there on weekends, but I've talked to the city council, the mayor, uh, now that we have people we can work together with, the possibility of putting an amphitheater on the back of the courthouse once we move all the temporary uh, buildings out of there. Uh, Bands on the Blackwater is going phenomenal, but yet we do it off a of temporary stage. Why don't we build an amphitheater? Why don't we take the rest of that property south of there that's owned by the county and the city and build a passive park that people can enjoy so if you have uh, any type of theatrical presentation going on, you have a place to do it. You have a park for people to sit and enjoy it. Uh, you know, I thought it was all lost. Uh, the evening, the last fire we had downtown was... Uh, you were there. I was there. Yeah, was tell there. us about uh, that. Shit, what what year there. was Sheila that? Sheila and I, uh, we, you know, I was there the entire evening. I helped the uh, deputies keep people back and different things. And finally, it got down to where just the phenomenal job that the firefighters did 
to keep that fire beat down and keep it off the Imogene. I think some of your pictures will show some of the destruction of it, but to keep it from totally being gone. And at 1.30 in the morning, my wife and I, Sheila, uh, we stood on the front porch of the Exchange Hotel and just, just watched. There was nothing more we could do and those firefighters had to be exhausted and you know they were putting all they could into it and thank the go thank the good lord that he brought some rain in wow. because wow. I, as hard as they tried i really feel like if it hadn't been for that rain at about 1:30 in the morning we'd have lost the island. oh my gosh yeah. well you talk about um a story that sounds like uh, something of epic proportions a little cinema scope maybe yeah, added there it's, it's, yeah and it's it's interesting when we're as i'm out in the community and going and talking to different th people and I hear all the time, I was there that night. I, I went down and watched the fire and I watched the firefighters work. And I had a privilege of going to a website uh, where they, they detailed the efforts that the firefighters went through that night and how a couple of firefighters got trapped. They had to call in a rescue team to get them out. They, there was cooperation between Whiting Field and all the different fire stations coming and working together. And, and it is a it's a it's a point of time that people remember. They say, "Oh, I was there that night. I remember standing there and watching it." But the great part is we've we've moved beyond that part, and now we're we're getting to the point where it's I'm coming there and enjoying it. I had a a, a moment that was very touching to me where we were showing a movie in the theater, and this little grandmother came in, and she had her granddaughter with her, and she said, "I used to come to the Imaging Theater." with my grandmother and watch movies, and now I'm bringing my granddaughter to watch a movie. That's so That was so, very cool. Yeah. It's very cool. That's very exciting. Yeah. So, Jeff, do you feel like there's um, almost more of a city loyalty that's uh, and a pride that's coming up? I do, and I think it stretches out beyond the city. I think the, the county uh, and the whole area, uh, uh, I think everyone's coming together and uh, between uh, the south end of the county and the north end of the county. Uh, I just feel like uh, everyone works well together that are uh, that are putting the effort in and they all want to see the common good of the area and the town. I think that's very exciting and I'm just, certainly you're seeing that firsthand. You're having um, other people come in to give you suggestions for the area. Yeah, well, last night uh, we had uh, Quint Studer uh, from Pensacola come in, and uh, we had a, an amazing night. Uh, he sharing some of us, some of his knowledge. Of course, he's done a lot of great things, a great vision for downtown Pensacola, and he and, uh, and he shared a message last night to us that I think that uh, a lot of people took, and uh, you know, and he he said that uh, Milton was promising. Milton had good bones and good people and, and good leadership, and uh, and I think that uh, based on his recommendation and what he saw. Uh, that Milton's ready to launch. And the, and the Imogene Theater is going to be a key part of the whole thing. And so I think that, that we're ready at this point. And just have to have a little bit of investment, and, uh, and I think we're going to be okay. But, um, yeah, the theater is, uh, is doing its thing right now, and we have a big, big concert coming up in January I think we'll talk about later. I think we will definitely talk about that. And since we are about to wrap this segment up, I want to get some final thoughts from Bob Snow. Uh, Bob, Bob Snow. Snow. <laughs> Bob Snow. I'm sorry, I got Jeff Snow and I got Bob Cole over here, but that would be a good combination well, from Bob Cole, excuse me. I just appreciate, you know, being able to work with the mayor and the city council and, and, and it's like the mayor said, it's all we have to work together. Absolutely. Our whole county. There's and that's one thing I love about Santa Rosa. We we're not in districts. Uh, all the commissioners serve at large. Uh, we we work well together. Our sheriff's office works well with us, so I think you know putting our back to the wheel, getting this thing done, uh, getting it out there that we have these things. There's a lot of people that have been here maybe most of their lives, a lot of new people here that don't recognize that we have the Imogene Theater, that we have the other facilities, the railroad station, and you know the historic district. So getting it out, that, that's the biggest message we need to do. Get it out, get people involved, and, and let's make it happen. All right, that's what we're doing this evening, So, and we will continue that. Thank you to Jeff Snow and Bob Cole Thank you. very much. I do know your names. <laughs> when we return, we'll tell you more about the history of the Imogene Theater in downtown Milton, Florida. We'll be joined by historian Richard Baldwin and director of operations Dennis Gleason. You're watching in studio on WSRE. We'll be back in a moment.
Welcome back. You're watching in studio our topic, the Imogene Theater. I'm pleased now to welcome to our discussion Richard Baldwin, who is the current president of the Santa Rosa Historical Society. Mr. Baldwin is retired from the U.S. Navy. And Dennis Gleason, who is the director of operations for the historic Imogene Theater. So, gentlemen, we're glad to have you join our conversation, and we're glad to have Mayor Meese stay with us to talk a little bit more because you were the president of the um, Santa Rosa Historical Society, correct? That's how I got my feet wet. Okay, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and 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 now you are. So we have all of the knowledge that we need about the history of the Imogene right here. I'll start with you, Richard, since you've just joined us. Um, talk to us about the Imogene and what makes the Imogene unique and why the Santa Rosa Historical Society saw fit to save her. Well, the when you think of crown jewels and the crown of any community, the Imogene, I think, ranks pretty much as the crown jewel. Uh, having a sense of history, uh, after I retired out in California, moved back, I grew up here in the Panhandle, Ferry Pass Elementary, and uh, so we settled in Milton because I love that town. My aunt used to live in Milton. And uh, just the sense of history between, uh, it's just not Milton, but it's a whole area, including you know the train depot and Baghdad, and having that sense of history. And when I was in California, I uh, was a member of the San Diego History uh, Society, Historical Society, and uh, San Diego went through a big rebirth of their old, what's called Old Town now, vibrant, celebrated, uh, just bringing in buildings, Heritage Square of old gingerbread Victorians. And I saw that's what Milton was trying to do as well, to save these great, awesome buildings from being destroyed, as the Imogene was slated to be destroyed, uh, and purchasing back in 1985. And just the dedication, Wes, his leadership and everything else, and president, presidents you know, after him, Vernon Compton, you know, great job and everything else, uh, and you know, getting the different grants to restore her to her glory. Uh, and just support from our city council, our commissioners, anything else to help aid in that, because no person is an island, and to have that mindset in the community of leadership that wants us to go in certain directions is quite a bonus and made it very attractive. So definitely got involved, and we painted signs, hang, hung signs, uh, you know, restored windows and everything else, decorating for Christmas now. Uh, so it was just a joy to be working with this cadre of uh, people and real enjoyment. So. And we're so um, fortunate to have people such as yourselves that are, uh, you know, involved in taking care of these things. I'm going to move to Dennis uh, really quickly because I would love for you to tell our viewers um, briefly, because we'll get back to it. But what the what role the Imogene's playing in the community right now? I mean, it's it's bringing people back downtown. Um, we have um, shows two to three times a week, and it's just a really cool place to be. Yeah, I can't wait to find out more and more about that. I'm going to back us up, though, a little bit and talk about, um, okay, we said this was a dramatic story, fire of 1909. Um, <laughs> tell us a little bit more about the history of that and, and you know, maybe even backing up from that, the original architect. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, you know, Milton uh, was is a, a t turn of the century brick and mortar mill town. In 1909, though, uh, Milton was a wooden town, and we had a great fire on the 31st of January 1909. It burned 22 buildings. The whole town went down, and it was a horrible event for Milton in its history. Worst fire ever. And the city leaders st t took a st step back and said, "Let's be progressive here." And so they brought in some phenomenal uh, investors and uh, and architects, Walker Walker Willis from Pensacola, who did. Uh, San Carlos, the San Carlos Hotel, among others. He came in and um, he, he built the Imogene Theater. And uh, the Imogene Theater served as the entertainment beacon for Milton for years. And not only that, he built the Exchange Hotel and he even built a high school for Milton, Milton's original high school on Canal Street. And so Milton kind of rose through the ashes and that look that it has downtown, that turn of the century brick and mortar look was born out of that rebirth. And so that's who we are. And so the Imogene, of course, uh, would serve uh, as the entertainment hub for Milton for, for years. And uh, there was movies there, plays. Uh, it was a vaudeville theater, so you had traveling acts uh, coming on the train, the L&N through Milton um, throughout the years. And uh, we had some great artists come in, uh, 
Roy Acuff played there in the 1930s, Minnie Pearl, wow. uh, Hank Williams uh, Sr. And so we had a lot of artists come through and of course, uh, you know, it, it had its heyday. Uh, unfortunately, in 1946, there were other theaters in town and, and it closed. And it kind of from 46 on until the 80s, uh, it, uh, it kind of remained dormant, but sealed up. But dormant. Well, but thank goodness that people saw the value, and it's a it's a parallel story with so many other cities. And and kudos to the cities that have saved uh, their theaters. So many have been slated for destruction because of the Metroplexes. Um, well, as Russ was saying, you know, Walker Willis designed not just the Imogene Theater and the Exchange Hotel and the what was then Milton High School, but when he designed the high school, every high school needs an auditorium. So he kind of cheated. He said, well, if you need an auditorium, we just built this one for the Imogene Theater. So the Imogene Theater actually has a twin inside the school board building. And uh, they've modified it for the ADA compliances and everything else. But uh, even the pictures in our foyer of the restoration with a blue and white deck around the uh, presentium. Uh, you'll see that in its twin sister in the school board building. I had so no she does idea. have an identical twin built at the same scale, so it's really kind of awesome. Most people don't realize she has a twin sister. I had no idea. Yeah. Uh -huh. Back when it was the Milton High School Mighty Black and Orange. Yeah. So. <laughs> that is so exciting. Well, and I guess uh, people will want to see this after hearing about hearing about that. That's incredible. Um, how did it become um, eventually owned by the Historical Society? Well, um, back in 1974, the Santa Rosa Historical Society Incorporated, they originally saved the L&N Depot, which is in Milton and it was slated for the wrecking ball and they got a museum started and then in the early 80s there was an opportunity to purchase the Imogene. The Imogene, uh, crazy as it sounds, was slated for the wrecking ball too. They were going to make a parking lot for the courthouse and so the Historical Society purchased it and, um, and through grant money and, and donations and a lot of uh, blood, sweat and tears it opened in 1987, the grand opening. And from 87 on um, she served as a, a place for plays and for weddings and for community gatherings uh, and uh, and was kind of a, a money maker for the Historical Society. And all up until 2009 when we had the 100 <laughs> the year fire. Uh, yeah. it, they were almost uh, uh, exactly 100 years apart. Yeah, it was interesting. I was president back then and um, just before the fire on January 6, 2009, the day before in fact, we had a Historical Society board meeting and we were discussing how we were going to commemorate the 100 year fire from the 31st of 1909, January. And uh, we were trying to brainstorm and so we left the, the meeting that evening and uh, the next night uh, she went up. Every Everything oh. went up. The whole block yeah. burned to the ground. This whole thing sounds like something that you just made up because <laughs> that happened and then the rain came and put right. out the rest of the fire. It's just incredible. Yeah. You must know all kinds of tidbits of information about uh, the area and the theater and oh, stories. It, it's uh, just amazing. Uh, my father had got stationed at Whitingfield in 46. So back then you couldn't get to Whitingfield directly. So he had to catch a train at the Allen Station and come up the back gate to Whitingfield. Uh, people don't realize Whitingfield had prisoners of war, German prisoners of war there to help build those initial buildings at Whitingfield. Uh, but it's the, you know, the Imogene, my father remembers going and seeing shows in the Imogene. So that was kind of neat as well. So there's a history, not just my generation, but back to my dad. Sure. I, I read some research where the night of the fire in 1909, Milton had no firefighting oh. equipment. Uh, People were running from the river with buckets oh, and whatever. And, and the in interesting part was after that fire, the city decided we need fire hydrants. Oh. We need, the, and that was the impetus for the founding of the Milton Fire Department. Oh. And they actually called the city of Pensacola, and the city of Pensacola put their firefighting equipment on a train car and sent it out there to help fight the fire because it was. 22 buildings, it was a massive fire. An interesting story about the Imogene is when she opened in 1913, um, she, is the, she was the first building in Milton to have electricity. Milton came later in electricity from other cities in the Panhandle and she was powered by a dynamo at the Baghdad Mill uh, Lumber Company. And so the, the owner of the theater in, uh, put in a, a marquee with chaser lights that went around advertising the next show. and. Uh, the citizens of Milton would literally sit on the courthouse lawn, which is across the street, just to watch the marquee at night because they'd never seen anything like that before. Right. And so um, from the very beginning, uh, she was mesmerizing the yeah. people of Milton. Yeah. Always been yeah. a beacon for the downtown area. That's really exciting. And the way she got yeah. her name. I wanted to ask you that. The um, 
the Gooch family purchased the building and their daughter, Imogene, mm -hmm. was big into the arts. She loved to sing, loved to perform. And uh, Mr. Gooch bought the building for her and the opening night she sang on the stage and danced to a song called Forever Blowing Bubbles. And uh, that's they named it the Imogene, the Imogene Theater. Theater. And people have asked me many times, how did the name come about? And that's where and, it came And what's from. interesting about that, uh, we, we had the 100th anniversary of birthday of the Imogene. We threw a big bash in 2013. And uh, a historian from UWF, I don't know how he did it, but we didn't even know she was alive, found Imogene's daughter who was still alive. Oh. Uh, unfortunately, Imogene passed away in the 40s. She had, I believe, cancer, mm -hmm. but her daughter's name was Algene, and they named her, her, her father was Albert, her mother was Imogene, yeah. and so they named her Algene, and mm -hmm. she was in her 80s. She came up for the, uh, for the 100th anniversary, and uh, that was an amazing experience, and we learned stuff about Imogene that we never knew, the real Imogene, right. and, um, and so it was a wonderful experience for us. And tell us something um, that you learned. Briefly, did you? Can you think of something fun she told you? Well, we learned that she she lived her whole adult life in Pensacola. Her last name she's buried in Pensacola, in fact, and we never knew that it was a mystery. Uh, unfortunately, I'm Jean's dad passed away shortly after they bought the theater in 1921, and uh, they moved back to Mariana where they had a theater there. And so I'm Jean kind of disappeared from the Milton scene. Um, but there was a lot of questions that we had never had answered, and of course the UWF history department came in and and helped solve those for us. And so a lot of mysteries were solved that night uh, and it was a wonderful experience for us. That sounds exciting. Were you there for that? Were you? No, no, I yeah. wasn't there for that. So you've come in and you're yeah. you're inheriting a really, really fun... I'm always learning new things, yeah. not just about uh, the history, but the impact, uh, positive impact the Imogen has always had on the community. Uh, I've been to weddings in there uh, since we moved back, uh, you know, and before RE Development came on board, who have really helped, if you could turbocharge it, turbocharge a building. I think RE Developments really help us do that and make it a beacon, basically uh, the entertainment center, you know, for Milton. And after the fire, we had a, um, we had a restora million dollar restoration and, and we, we did really well with that. We were short about $100,000, so Impact 100 gave us a $100,000 grant, which helped us finish off the theater. And, uh, and then, of course, that's when Kyle took over. Yeah, well, yeah. thank goodness for Impact that has helped so many historic oh, they have the, uh, a great yeah. bunch of ladies yeah. that have yeah. done a great service to their communities. Right. We really thank Impact 100 a lot. Absolutely, and we'll talk some more in just a few moments. There's much more ahead. You are watching in studio on WSRE TV, PBS for the Gulf Coast. We'll be back right after this break. Stay with us. WSRE is celebrating 50 years. Here's a look back to when it all started. Educational television, ETV, produced closed circuit classroom courses from 1963 to 1967. Local teachers auditioned for creating curriculum and teaching grade school and college instructional courses. Mrs. Onita Carpenter became director of ETV in April 1966. Broadcasting 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. into public schools and switching to open circuit for home viewers from 3 p.m. to 10 p.m. Channel 23 began open circuit broadcasts as WSRE, representing Santa Rosa and Escambia counties on September 11, 1967. Thank you for being part of our past and our future. Welcome back. This is In Studio, our topic, the Imogene Theater in historic downtown Milton. With us, the current president of the Santa Rosa Historical Society, Richard Baldwin, executive director of the Imogene, Kyle Werner, and Dennis Gleason, who is the director of operations and staying with us, is Mayor Wesley Meese, who is a former um, president of the Santa Rosa Historical Society. Got that all right. Boy, a wealth of knowledge around this table, and I'm very grateful. We were talking during the break, talking a little bit about um, who originally owned the building, 
before the historical society got it, the Fleming family? Yeah, the, the Fleming family uh, had the building uh, in, the, in, the, in the 80s and beyond. Uh, it was a, uh, a dry cleaners uh, down, the, and then of course the top of the theater was kind of sealed off. Uh, you couldn't even get into it uh, over the years. And so uh, we purchased it from the Fleming family, uh, the historical society, for $50,000. And then at that point, it was a, a bunch of manual labor from the organization to uh, to get out the debris. There was a hurricane in the late 70s, 79, I believe, called Frederick. I remember that, Frederick. Uh, that came in, had ripped the roof off the theater, and it was um, having some structural problems and that sort of thing. So the society came in and, and cleaned it out, and they were able to put a good roof on it. And uh, thanks to some grants from the state of Florida, half a million dollars in grants, they were able to uh, restore it for the 87 grand opening. Wow. It's been, you know, it's, it sounds to me like it's been up and down and up and down. And, and your story of the train between Whiting Field and the Imogene, I had no idea. That is very, very Well, neat. and finally, when the train uh, route was, you know, the uh, Amtrak and other train uh, ownerships, when they cancel a route and never reactivate it again, they have what's called the rails to trails program Well, they'll go ahead and deed the the property of where the rail set to the community if they'll go and take it over so that's our hiking and biking path that goes from the Allen and depot all the way up to the back gate of whiting field because that's where the railroad used to run mm. uh, so a lot of people use it especially the pitcher plant area a uh, lot of natural uh, beauty along that route uh, so people use it for jogging for hiking for bicycle riding, we have the what truly spoken that one business ride on uh, Stewart, where it's just bicycles because we have so many bicyclists there, and people don't realize Milton is the canoe and kayaking capital of Florida. That's fantastic, and I will tell you, my family goes and rents bicycles there and and rides that trail. It's yeah. so much fun, so many things going on. So you can go there for the day and ride the trail and stay for the evening's entertainment. Um, Kyle, you had some some more thoughts on the history of the Imogene. Well, you know, the thing that, um, the story of the Imogene, as I mentioned earlier, was one of disaster, rebirth, disaster, rebirth. And one of the things that um, I think is important to talk about was the fact that the, the building was scheduled for uh, destruction. Um, they were going to build a, they were going to tear down this historic Imogene Theater and build a parking lot for the courthouse across the street, which is now leaving downtown. And the, the tragedy that that would have been to have destroyed a, this historic building, and now it would have been a parking lot for something that's now vacating downtown. So the fact that she has survived hurricanes, she has survived fires, she has, and she just keeps coming back. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that speaks to the spirit of the community. Um, all the challenges that the downtown, the fires, right. all the things that have happened, it, it speaks to the heart and the soul of the community of Milton. So, um, Richard, a lot of people back at that time were leaving the cities. They were retail areas and they went somewhere else for retail? Uh, well, as we got the bigger box stores and strip malls and everything else, I think the Six Flags Mall was the first quote-unquote mall for Milton. Um, there, there used to be people would come in on Saturday night. What was it, barefoot, you know, night or whatever? Because they come in to get shoes and everything else. They'd stop at Finkelstein's and all the other different things right there on, on Willing. Uh, so they made it because uh, you didn't have a lot of people driving cars. As a fact, uh, there's still uh, at our Episcopal church. They still have a ring on the tree on the corner where people tie up their horses, yeah. and uh, that was fun. <laughs> pointing that out during our last ghost walk in October. Uh, so, you know, just to have all that history there, the gingerbread of the St. Mary's and how long they've been there and the homes, uh, and just working with other historical organizations in our county, uh, you know, like the Baghdad Village Preservation Society. Uh, so we work with those other ones as well to, uh, to create a synergy because the more we work together, the more we can accomplish. I love that about what I've heard from everybody today because there are a lot of different entities involved and it doesn't even feel surface. It feels like you're all really working well together for a common goal. Right. And so here, so sort of what happened, you know, to follow up on your question, you know, at one time in the turn of the century up into the 1940s, downtown Milton was the sort of the mecca for everything for Santa Rosa County. It was the central. 
After World War II, we had uh, experienced urban sprawl, a lot of track housing, strip malls, that sort of thing. And that's what people wanted in this country. It was all across the nation. And downtowns kind of boarded up. I think Pensacola saw that as well. It was a common theme. And what we've seen in recent years is a resurgence of, of my generation and people that are older than me a little bit and even younger than me are wanting to rediscover their downtowns. And what we're seeing throughout America, and I think Pensacola is a great example of it, mm. is we're seeing a revitalization of these, uh, these unique, uh, non-cookie cutter historic districts that people really want to go and live. They want to live downtown. They want to be able to walk to get something to eat or go to the store or maybe have a downtown theater to go watch a show. And so Milton has all of that. And so what we're, what we're literally witnessing right now in Milton is a rebirth, a revival of its historic district. And it's happening. And it's happening rapidly. It really is. And so I think that uh, it's kind of reversed, whereas the previous generation was more like, let's, let's, let's go live five miles out of town and build a house on five acres of land, and now people are saying, I want to restore that Victorian. I want to restore that turn of the century, you know, bungalow. And so we're seeing that in Milton right now, and it's an exciting time for our historic district, because really, that downtown, those buildings, and uh, that river are the crown jewel of Milton. And, and, I, and, you know, one thing I tell my students in school is America is a teenager compared to other countries of the world. We're just starting to figure out in this country the connection between architecture and culture. If you go to places like France and, 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 uh, and England, uh, they, they already get it. People go to those places to see the architecture. Now, people come to America. We have natural beauty, too. But our architecture is just starting to play a role. And I think that people are recognizing that, and it's an exciting, it's an exciting time. So we can get some, um, some destination historical tourism uh, really going with this as right. well for the for the all of the Northwest Florida area I want to um, ask Dennis as a young person seeing the operations and stuff going on down there um, how does it make you feel to see see the revitalization and it makes me feel like it's supposed to happen because mm -hmm. um, I mean I, my background was just really band management and they contacted Kyle about performing at the Imogene mm -hmm. before it was even really anything um, so then I got involved that way, but that up and down of was it going to work? Is it not going to work? Is it going to be? It's kind of been a theme since the beginning. And when I walk in, it kind of feel like it's supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. So it's ready. It's, it's ready. ready. And you, uh, Richard, you actually produced a play in the theater. What kind of challenges did you come up against, and and how would it be to produce a play in there today? Uh, actually, a lot easier uh, after uh, the Grant One Hundred. Impact 100 grant, uh, we're able to, we got the lighting and everything else modified, whereas before, uh, you know, we'd have to rent like spotlights and everything else uh, and theatrical lighting. So on the, uh, basically a lot of the money went to finally getting the theatrics up to where when Kyle and his group came in, they didn't have to do a lot of the, basically, now it was there. We had the theatrical lighting, we had the speaker systems, we had the digital control system, we have the Christie movie theater system. So like when you go to any of the standard quote unquote modern theaters with a Christie projection system, we have that mm -hmm. at, at the mm -hmm. iMachine. Uh, so we're able to show movies uh, and as a, a nonprofit, we also avail ourselves as a historical society to help other nonprofits uh, and let them come in for free of charge to conduct events that they've got to do. And that really helps. We've helped uh, a lot of the nonprofits in our county by doing it that way. Uh, but now that it's totally modernized, but it doesn't look it, it's hidden in the historic beauty of the iMachine. So you don't really notice all the fancy stuff, uh, like some lighting fixtures, which uh, I don't think we really have any pictures of what the Imogene looked like in its heyday. So we had to kind of rethink that and what was in, in existence. So like we have some uh, gaslight fixtures that have bulbs in them along the balcony edge. And of course, because gaslights were up like this, these fixtures are face down because you can screw the bulbs mm -hmm, in easier. Mm -hmm. uh, but a great job and leadership of Wes when he was president and everything else. Uh, I'm just standing on people's shoulders. I'm the new president here and have been, you know, going my second year. But it's only possible to do what we're doing today because of what Wes and all the rest of the historical society did just with the foresight to purchase the building. Thank goodness for, for people with foresight mm -hmm. and thank goodness for historians and now we've got the, this beautiful theater for so many to enjoy. When you do your ghost tours, I have to ask, do you stop by the Imogene and point it out? Are there any ghosts? Well, at the, the ghost walk always begins yeah. at the Imogene. Okay. And uh, basically mm -hmm. the uh, celebrants will gather up in the theater and then they're called down by groups. And uh, 
Wes has been tour guide, mm -hmm. and uh, as well as a ghost. Mm -hmm. So the nice thing about our ghost walk is we actually take a walking tour through the historic district to historical homes and buildings, and we'll actually enter and go through some of those. So people experience history firsthand. So it's, it's not a, a scary ghost walk. It's an educational ghost walk with facts and everything else. And people seem to enjoy it as fact this, uh, we had the most common comment, and Kyle will attest to this, this is the best ghost walk you have ever had. <laughs> and uh, so we were really pleased that oh, it went off great. so that, well. That's great. Uh, but uh, then we provide refreshments. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, while we're there, they watch a movie, the Halloween theme. Mm -hmm. One year was Hocus Pocus mm -hmm. and, you know, other things. Uh, so Wes, as well as myself, mm -hmm. when you're the president, you kind of enlist your family mm -hmm. members sure. to do sure. stuff. So I know his mom and dad have helped a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I finally twisted my sister's arm. She was one of the helpers upstairs mm. for this last ghost walk. Nice, nice. So. And, and we've got just a few minutes. Your, your final thoughts on things. Well, Sherry, you know, I often wonder, um, what are people going to say about me and about my generation 100 years from now in 2117? What are we doing right now that's going to set Milton up for its future, like our ancestors did? And so we are taking the steps right now to harness and to capitalize on Milton's greatest assets, which is that river, the people, the leadership, and of course those buildings downtown. And we are taking the necessary steps right now with the Imogene to ensure that Milton is going to be vibrant. We know what America is doing right now with the revitalizations of downtowns I spoke earlier. And, you know, it's a trend and, and people love architecture and they love culture. And I am proud to be the mayor because this is a critical time in our city's history. And it's not going to happen at once. It's going to take time to do this. It's going to take money and investors. Uh, but I'm seeing it slowly but surely. Every time a store is unboarded and a restaurant comes in, a brewery, uh, some sort of nightclub for people to hang out, our pilots at Whiting Field, it's happening. And I'm excited about that. And Milton's future is bright. That's very exciting. And thank you, Richard, for your work and, and continuing the tradition on and all the history and I uh, hope we can follow up with you someday. Thank you so much, Thanks. gentlemen, for your time and for your knowledge. And uh, we are going to come back and continue our discussion. Kyle and Dennis will stay on to talk about the future of the Imogene Theater. You're watching in studio on WSRE TV, PBS for the Gulf Coast. Stay with us. Welcome back. This is In Studio. Our guests continuing on with us this evening, Dennis Gleason and Kyle Verner. And uh, we're just going to talk more about what's going on today at the Imogene Theater. I am so excited. I'm a theater buff from way back, so we'll just put that out here and tell you that I do have a big bias uh, for theaters. I check them out in every really amazing town has an amazing theater. It's just that simple. So I'm glad that the the society had the foresight to purchase it. And now you've come in, you're you're managing it. And Dennis, tell us how this relationship works. Um, the Historical mm -hmm. Society, when they acquired the building and got it restored, had a vision of taking it back to what it was intended to be, a performing arts center. And at the time when they first got it back opened, it became because of the availability of talent. They, 
it became a very, very popular wedding venue uh, facility. And it's a terrific place to have weddings, and mm -hmm. we, we do a lot of weddings mm -hmm. there. But they wanted it to be open for the public and, and allow the public to come in and see and not just a place where private invitation only events take place. And so they they found me, I, I got involved and we wanted to find local talent, people who knew the music scene in the local area and, and knew the operational side of that. And I found Dennis, uh, Dennis was managing a band that came to play and then uh, they had done some um, their own performances and, and rented venues and done things and I, I, I drafted Dennis and uh, he's played an invaluable role of finding talent, managing the operations of getting the band in and getting the sound check done and, and managing all of that process. So uh, it's been a fun two year project uh, which we believe is going to be a long term project but it's been a lot of fun and, a, and a definitely a labor of love. I hope that it will continue to be a, a long project. How about you, Dennis? So now you have a unique perspective um, having performed in there and you know what's needed. So well, I personally did never perform, but the band that I managed okay, did. Okay, I gotcha. Um, yeah, so, I mean, so what's, actually what's needed is, is not much sound because the room acoustically is so well made that um, professional actors can just use their voice. Wow. And that's all that's needed. Yeah. And so if you walk into the Imogene today, somebody that hasn't been to the Imogene, what do you see when you first walk um, in? A lot of people comment on how it looks like the courtroom scene in the movie To Kill a Mockingbird because it has oh, the wraparound balcony right, with the right. short railing, the white post all the way around. Um, and it feels like you're walking back into time. It really does. And so you have the ability, you have not fixed seating, is that correct? So correct. you can it's, turn it into all right. kinds of different things? Tables and chairs can be put in place, put back, taken back out. I mean, so many things. Standing room, if it's a younger band, more energetic, can just be standing. Um, if it's a... Uh, older crowd, older it's okay crowd. to say that. Well, I was <laughs> going to make the announcement, but we'll, we'll make that in a little bit. Right. Um, we can bring in the chairs. Mm -hmm. So, and how many people do you seat when you have um, a, a big concert? For instance, you have a big concert we coming do. up. Um, go ahead. We'll January the 19th uh -huh. of 2018, we have a, our first major act, which is B.J. Thomas. Wow. He's going to be performing live at the theater. Mm -hmm. And um, B.J.'s had a, a good career. He's, uh, he's sold 70 million records uh, over his career. Uh, he's the only artist to ever have had Song of the Year in pop music. Song of the Year in country music and Song of the Year in contemporary Christian music. And what uh, song is that? Was it Raindrops? Uh, Raindrops yeah. keep falling on okay. my head. Right. Uh, hooked on a feeling. Hooked on a feeling. I don't yeah. know what yeah, the, yeah, yeah. you know, but he's Which five, one, that one right, was, a right. five-time Grammy Grammies. Award winner, two-time mm -hmm. Dove mm -hmm. Award winner. Wow. Still touring, still loves to perform, mm -hmm. um, and we're thrilled that That's he's going to be so playing. That's so exciting for this area. And in, in the experience of seeing live music in the in the the Imogene is unique in the fact that the furthest seat from the stage in the entire building is 58 feet. Wow. So no matter where you're sitting in the building, you're close. Um, and, you know, people have made jokes about, I want to be up front, I want to get, mm -hmm. I want I want to feel <laughs> his sweat, you know, mm -hmm. and the other people like to sit back and take mm -hmm. in the experience mm -hmm. as a whole. So it really gives flexibility for a very intimate performance, but yet amazing sound quality. Um, every artist that we've had come in talks about the uniqueness of the room and how well, as a performer, they can hear. And um, because of the acoustics, that's uh, important. And that's, for it's very important. And the room is warm and inviting, and the this you know the audience is close, and the and they and the 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 artist feed off of their energy and then they give it back to the audience and there's this communication, almost a communion that takes place between the artist and the and the audience and it's really a neat environment and very different than what you would see at other venues. So we're... I think what helps that communion atmosphere is like, we do all general mission seating. Right. 
Because then it, kind of an inside joke is every seat's a front row seat. I was going to say it's what uh, it sounds like. It's like. worth it's uh -huh. worth it because it's that uh -huh. cool of an environment. Mm -hmm. So that you don't have tiered ticket right. prices. Right. And so you get there right. and you get. And it's it's preference. Mm -hmm. If you want to sit up mm -hmm. front, mm -hmm. if you want to sit in the balcony, it's mm -hmm. your choice. But it's still a really good seat. Mm -hmm. right. And do you feel like um, since the acoustics are so good, was that by design? Did the, w or what, did it just happen? Well, you know, in 1912, when they started construction, mm -hmm. they, there weren't microphones, there weren't PA systems, mm -hmm. and so the room was designed to carry the sound out to the audience, and, to, and the room is very earthy and live. Mm -hmm. And that was because they wanted, you know, it was built back in the day before PA systems, mm -hmm. and nowadays a lot of venues is all speaker-driven. Mm -hmm. And the sound that you get off the stage is very speaker-driven. And in our theater, the sound that you get is very earthy. It's live. It's pure. It's pure. Mm -hmm. And um, we've had artists, you know, be in the middle of a performance and literally just say, hang on a minute, unplug their guitar from their amplifier, walk up to the front of the stage and just do this intimate, close... And, and they all just, man, we, we, you can't do that in most venues, what I just did. And it, it's, it's really a unique experience to see any kind of performance, whether it's music, art, uh, theater, or anything, because you are so close. Well, I was going to ask about that. So the performers could actually have a choice of whether they want to be amplified or have that organic yeah, sound. Yeah, and oftentimes we don't even mic the drums. Right. You don't need to. You right. don't need to. Yeah, because... The every row, every There's been a few times where Todd, our sound person mm -hmm. from Live Music Productions, he comes by and he'll, he, he runs sound on his uh, iPad. And he will literally show me that the bass guitar amp is turned, his, his, the microphone on it is turned off. All the way off. Right. Yeah, because just don't need you just it. doesn't, you, you don't need yeah. it. But, yeah. uh, wow. but yet, it, it, there's this unique intersection of history. Uh, culture and today's music. Uh, so you you hear when we have a, a younger band, you have this new modern style, cool sounding music being performed in in a historic venue, and these and the artists are like, man, this is amazing. I'm playing on the same stage that you know Hank Williams played on. I'm playing on the same stage as. Roy Acuff and Minnie Pearl and uh, old vaudeville acts and that intersection of history and today's music and, and, and the future's music, it's, it's a really unique intersection that is um, very engaging and inspiring for our audiences and for our, our performers. Well, um, and when you're in the theater, can you just kind of feel that energy from the last Absolutely. hundred years? Absolutely. Yeah. No question. It's just there. Mm -hmm. You can't help but feel it. Do you have any big special plans for the theater that we... We do. Um, we're just going to keep scaling up the level of act and keep bringing in no-name acts. Do you think having B.J. Thomas is going to kind of kick that off? You think other performers are going to say, oh, B.J. played there. That must be a great place. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, the booking agents have are discovering the theater because uh, of the how unique it is and... Um, you know, we, when we started this two years ago, you know, we kind of made a joke that we were going to learn to, we were going to learn to crawl first and then learn to walk and then learn to run, to trot a little bit mm -hmm. and now run. And we're now ready from a production standpoint to, to bring a bigger act. Uh, we're excited to have, we had Denny Lane back in the fall. Um, Denny Lane was a founding member of the Moody Blues, oh. uh, was a, a riding partner of Paul McCartney, a member of Wings. In fact, mm -hmm. His band was Wings, and, and mm -hmm. Paul McCartney joined, joined him. Yeah, and to to have him on that stage mm -hmm. performing "Band on the Run," mm -hmm. kind of a funny it's, little story mm -hmm. about that. Just generationally, they were doing they start. I recognized "Band on the Run." Mm -hmm. They were doing it in soundcheck, right. and in my mind, wow, they're going to cover. That's a cool song to cover. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't put it together until uh -huh. I started playing it uh, that's during the performance. That's, oh, that's really cool. That's their song. Yeah. That is extremely. And yeah. you know, even yeah. he commented from the stage that you can't find these rooms anymore. Mm -hmm. And he had done his, he had planned his entire tour around playing in small, intimate venues mm -hmm. because he wanted to go back to what it was like playing as a young person over in England in the small venues. Mm -hmm. And it was really, and, and that's what our theater provides. You know, we're not the singer. Mm -hmm. um, we're not a, a, a big 
number of seats. Mm -hmm. Our venue is based on intimacy. Well, and it all works together Absolutely. for good. You have this show here, you have this show Absolutely. here. You know, there's even um, mm -hmm. other places down the road from the Sanger that Correct. do very, very well. They do. And so I think that's great. If you can't fit in here, you go here, mm -hmm. right? And it, each one mm -hmm. can create its own, and we mm -hmm. support and we mm -hmm. thrive because of mm -hmm. what the overall music scene that is taking place, or art scene and theater scene that's taking place. And it's getting bigger and bigger, and how do you see the Imogene fitting into that? Um, just the continued success. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just and when when you think of the Imogene in, um, you know, another year, what do you see? Well, what we what we want to see is mm -hmm. when we started two years ago, we started with the weekends, and we mm -hmm. we want to work back into the week and and bring more educational activities, more, you know, things, drama classes, you know, youth acting, youth choruses. Uh, culinary theater, right, you know, right. a lot of different things. So the, the, the building is so flexible, it, it provides an opportunity to use the building Lots in of a different many things. different ways. Very exciting. The gem of downtown Milton, and Absolutely. we appreciate you coming on and telling us all about it, continued success. And we'd like to sincerely thank you and all of our guests for taking time out of their busy schedules to talk with us about the historic Imogene Theater. Our guests in order of appearance this evening, Kyle Verner, general manager, Milton Mayor Wesley Meese, County Commissioner Bob Cole, Milton City Councilman Jeff Snow, Historian Richard Baldwin, and Director of Operations Dennis Gleason. It is so nice to know that Lady Imogene is back to life, and many feel that she is bigger and better than ever. So today, the Imogene Theater is providing Santa Rosa County an active performing arts theater again for audiences from all over to enjoy. Whether it's live music, drama, theater, or education, you will find it all at the historic Imogene Theater in Milton. If you'd like to know more about the Imogene, please check out their webpage at theimogenetheater.com or find them on Facebook at the Imogene Theater slash events. Thank you so much for joining us tonight on In Studio. I truly hope that you have enjoyed our show. I'm Sherry Hemminghouse Weeks. I'll look forward to seeing you on a future edition of In Studio. Until then, have a great evening and a wonderful holiday season. Good night.